This is going to be a very high level view, so a couple thousand meters above the ground of annotations. And I want to start with our good friend Charles Darwin, who is sort of our, one of our key people in terms of annotation within the biodiversity world. One of the things that Darwin said back in the 1840s was that you can't actually conduct natural history investigations without access to a large library. He, of course, had one of those at the Natural History Museum, what was in the Natural History Museum British Library in London. Um, but a lot of people don't have those today. So one of the things that we did have been building over the past 12 years is the Biodiversity Heritage Library, which brings this large amount of content to people all around the world in a fully open and accessible way. So we are a global consortium. We have 20 members and 20 affiliates and over a total of 80 contributors around the world. Again, all in an open access platform so that people can use it and reuse it in different ways. We have about 54 million pages of text already available, about 220,000 volumes. So it is that large library that Darwin was looking for. So Darwin was an inveterate annotator. Um, when he was compiling the origin of species, he was looking through large amounts of data in the form of books, annotating those and creating different types of content that all formed into the actual origin of species theory. Um, one of my favorite quotes from Darwin is this one. Um, again, sounds a little bit like my, what my daughter might annotate. So he was annotating the principles of geology and it, one of the comments on it was, if this were true, adios theory. So again, it's kind of an interesting quote. Um, and he was scribbled that in the margins there. But I was thinking, wouldn't it have been really great if all these books were digitized in the 1850s and Darwin could have used hypothesis or a similar annotation tool. He could have annotated it right there in the text, pulled those all in, and it would have saved lots and lots of time in the overall compilation of the uh, origin. So again, BHL provides a rich field for annotation going forward so that we can have our future Darwins be able to annotate, compile, and create all of this information going forward in a much more um, simple um, process. So right now, BHL is very heavily used in an API and through um, machine reading um, as well as humans. So again, there's a possibility, as we saw with some of those um, citation analysis from the Norton people yesterday, of trying to figure out ways that we can do sort of automated annotations. But a lot of the annotations still remain in sort of a human format. And a lot of humans want to be continuing to annotate. So how can we integrate an annotation platform within the BHL platform? That brings us to another one of our um, um, iconic figures, Linnaeus. So Linnaeus had two books. He actually wrote many books. But these two key ones were Species Plantarum and Systema Natura. These were the two volumes, 1854. 1753 and 1758 that determined how taxonomic organisms, species, are named. And that's the familiar binomial, homo sapiens, ZMAs, et cetera. And then, of course, you can compile them into this uh, familiar chart. So um, Linnaeus said that nature doesn't take leaps. That's the natura non facet saltus. But humans like to take leaps. You like to move from one thing to another, and that's one of the key things that annotations does enable us to do. So here we have an example. This is the sperm whale, um, sometimes known as Physeter macrocephalus, and sometimes known as Physeter catadon. One of the problems with um, biodiversity literature is that species names change over time as new taxonomic concepts come about, as we, Currently now we're doing DNA sampling and we can take species and lump them together and what we thought were two species before, maybe one was a juvenile version, one was an adult, we now know there's one species. Also when we look at things we now see that sometimes they're actually two species, so we split those taxon concepts. But historically all of those concepts are embedded in this printed literature, now digitized literature, and how do we sort of link and annotate those different types of taxonomic concepts together in both an automated way as well as in a human-based way. So here's the lumping and splitting. Here's an example of one of the books that, that is in BHL. And again, we have an annotation here in the printed form. And then our author is going through and annotating and changing all of those things over the course of time. But how can we do that today? And how can we capture those things from the past? Just as a quick little side note, um, I do hope that this one particular species, Vara gopupa biheli, doesn't get its name changed because this was named after BHL by one of our researchers because he was so pleased with our services. Um, 
another key thing in terms of annotation is linking together different elements within the biodiversity world. So here we have a, a um, specimen from the United States Exploring Expedition. These were um, collected in the, between 1838 and 1842. These um, particular botanical specimens are housed at the Smithsonian. We also, of course, have the printed volumes that came about after the um, expedition, and the researchers published these in print form. There's also archival materials related to those, and there are illustrations. So how do we link together all of those things? Are there ways within the annotation community, annotation methodologies that we can use to link together the specimens, the printed volumes, the illustrations, and the archival materials? This leads me to sort of think a little bit about Vannevar Bush. Um, Vannevar Bush, who was, of course, an um, important computer science researcher in the um, World War II period, was also a Smithsonian Institution regent, so that's a little Smithsonian connection with Bush. But he's probably most famous for his Memex concept and the As We May Think article, where he goes and talks about the different ways in which researchers, how he envisioned in a pre-automated world that people might annotate things going forward. And I like this particular quote, a record, if it's to be useful to science, must be continuously extended, it must be stored, and above all, it must be consulted. And I think this is sort of the key component of annotation within the science community, is that we do need to make that platform available and we need to make it, um, extend it, store it, and reuse it. Um, just yesterday, um, with some of, I don't know if Dan is still here, but um, again, um, this was sort of came up on the Twitter stream again. Um, it's important not to forget that the transition of annotation has to occur into the digital world. One reason I think that this is particularly important is here we have three species of birds that are native to Hawaii. This is from a book from the 1850s, um, and these species were first published in this book, but today, all those species are extinct, and the only evidence that we have of those are in these illustrations in the book and some specimens in the natural history collections around the world. Right now, we're in the midst of what many are calling the sixth extinction, and all of this content, all of these species, all of this information about life on Earth is disappearing at a rapid pace. This is one of our um, researchers, Rich Pyle, in Hawaii, who extended the library metaphor to include the concept of the library of life being all of these species, and how we are building these card catalogs, how we annotate card catalogs, how we annotate species going forward. And if we don't do that and keep track of that, we're going to lose evidence of what's been on our planet and how we may help it in the future. Because of this, BHL is a supporter of the Annotating All Knowledge Group, and we really hope to be able to contribute both to the biodiversity information as well as to extending throughout the rest of the greater annotation community. So thank you very much, and I'll turn it back over to Nate.